Okay, welcome to the channel and a conversation that we're going to have about Microsoft and the M&A deal announced yesterday where they're going to spend $69 billion of a cash funded takeover of Activision Blizzard. Uh, MSFT shares were down about 2.5% yesterday. The Nasdaq actually uh, was quite an underperformer down around the same margin against the other US indices. Activision were up around 26%. But I was in a supermarket last night and even the guy on the checkout was trying to talk to me about this deal, which I think says a lot and really is the reason why I want to do this video. And there's no one else better in the Amplify team to get on this call than Eddie Donmez. So, Eddie, um, how's it going? And initial thoughts on the, on the news? Yeah, still all going well. And i um, excited to see the news yesterday. It's, it's definitely a huge deal. I think why it's caught so much attention is because... It's got a huge amount of users and it appeals to the consumer because a lot of us are gamers. So, yeah, Microsoft buying uh, Activision uh, for $69 billion. It's the biggest tech deal ever. It's actually just eclipsed uh, Dell EMC, which was $67 billion. Uh, yeah, representing a 45% premium to Activision's uh, Friday, Friday close. Uh, the offer basically equates to about 18 times uh, EBITDA, Activision's EBITDA. Um, and this is pretty much in line with comps. Um, so there was a, a recent acquisition of uh, Take-Two. Uh, they make Grand Theft Auto, which is about 16 times EBITDA as well. So it's kind of in line with comps, but it's such an exciting deal because it really represents, I think, the next kind of secular wave of deal making. Um, and this is all really centered around gaming, esports, the metaverse, of course, which is, I guess, slightly further along, I would say. Mm. Um, but this is definitely a great consumer facing acquisition for Microsoft and, and Xbox. And of course, Microsoft is a cloud beast. Uh, and this kind of flows into that kind of rhetoric. Yeah, I, I know in mainstream, I think people have got way too excited about Meta. And I actually, I remember doing a podcast with Piers, our head of trading a few months ago, and we were talking about Microsoft. And, you know, there's such a beast silently going along in the cloud space, uh, in their professional services that they offer. I mean, uh, the main might not have the talent, but they've got the firepower to purchase and then facilitate that kind of infrastructure. And yeah, I think Facebook, credit to Zuckerberg for putting it in the public consciousness, but yeah, I think Microsoft can, like you said, the metaverse is later. <laughs> There's steps to that process. And I guess this is a, a really intelligent move in that direction. Yeah, so, you know, what's really drove this deal is Activision Blizzard is, you know, it's big. It's a really <laughs> big company. They have 400 million monthly active users. The best fact ever that I've researched and, and found, Candy Crush. Remember that game? Is it still, still has people still play that? <laughs> people still play it, and it's the highest grossing mobile game outside of China. They have 273 million monthly active users. It's a huge game. So I think, again, this is really all about gaming, and I think particularly mobile gaming and this new transition to cloud gaming, which is really following the almost the, the Netflix subscription route. So, you know, I'm a gamer. I used to game a lot more. I don't really have much time anymore, but Call of Duty, which is one of the biggest titles that Activision Blizzard hold. And this is all, what it's all about. It's all about IPs and titles and these kind of game franchises, which are just massive. Um, and this really kind of sets up the scene between this gaming fight between Facebook, between uh, Apple. So Apple have got uh, Apple Arcade, which they've got you know, a few titles, what, you know, some that I play like NBA is fantastic. The graphics incredible, especially with the new M1 processors, uh, particularly in the iPad and the MacBook. So that's really good, but it's not uh, got the big titles just yet. It's really kind of in its infancy. So I'd be looking at Apple, uh, maybe looking at an EA Sports, for example, in terms of what deals are uh, to come. But what this does is there's an app called Mobile Pass that it has 25 million subscribers, uh, particularly on, you can download it on, uh, on Apple and things like that. Um, and what this does is essentially brings all of those titles onto that mobile gaming platform. Uh, so it's like Fallout, Halo, Call of Duty, and it really represents an exciting kind of move by Microsoft. And this kind of gaming and advertising space 
could represent an incremental $1 trillion share gain for Microsoft longer term. So this kind of uh, global gaming market generated $180 billion in, in revenues in 2021, and that's expected to grow to $218 billion just by 2024. Right, so this is this is the next kind of uh, move in a big addressable market. Yeah, and you, you mentioned there before about is this going to be a wave of consolidation in this space now as they all compete to kind of try to eat up all of the existing ones. So I saw Sh- Sony shares were down, obviously a big competitor with the PlayStation. They were down ten percent or more than that actually overnight in Japan. That's twenty billion off their market cap right there on the back of the news. Um, shares in Square Enix and Capcom, they were up about 5% in overnight Asia pack trade as well. So are we going to see a bit of a broader land grab in the space now as they go after these names? Absolutely. I think this is definitely the next kind of, as I mentioned, secular deal uh, trend where the big kind of firms are going to start, or even mid cap are going to start purchasing up these kind of uh, franchises and these game providers all to consolidate so you'd be looking at apple for example i would say like an ea would be super attractive to them um, and a a metaverse looking at potential targets and that's why you saw the kind of uh, comps for uh you know similar companies to activision blizzard really get a a nice kind of uh, move up yesterday um so i think that is going to be the next kind of uh, driver of deal flow, but also cyber security then as you're kind of moving people more and more users into gaming and things like that, then you've got, you know, a potential real attractive opportunity for lots of kind of smaller to mid-sized cyber security names as well. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned at the start that Microsoft were offering a 45% premium. Um, I was looking at the five-year average for that space of video game producers, other entertainment software, and it normally over the five-year average is around 24%. But Microsoft are getting a fairly good price, right? If we look back at the last 12 months. Absolutely. I mean, so yeah, you in the in the general tech space, you generally see some anywhere from a kind of 20 to 30% premium. That's kind of standard. But there's been blood in the streets, if you like. Um, so there's been a huge amount of kind of culture problems let's say well to put it lightly at activision i think that is putting it too lightly and sexual mis- misconduct and lots of kind of scandals rumbling on and this is one i guess um, big concern uh, in terms of the integration of the two cultures like the xbox culture uh, and the uh, activision blizzard culture moving together but the shares were down since that kind of scandal uh, emerged uh, down about 30 percent. so yes the 45 percent premium seems pretty hefty but actually uh, you're getting a very good kind of you're buying when there's blood in the streets but then there is the potential concerns in terms of the culture uh, and there's going to be a lot of work to be to be done there yeah what i was reading was that um the in terms of the deal timeline microsoft expects it deal to close in fiscal year 2023 and in terms of the ceo of activision so bobby kotick who's just been the person in a lot of focus recently he's going to stay there until the deal fully closes is what they're, they're talking about at the moment. Um, but just given what you were saying then, and if we do get this wave of consolidation, surely at some point, and just given the just general size of the deal, this is going to get regulators sniffing around thinking, right, uh, was it, was, am I right in saying this is going to be like the third largest gaming like, yeah, so, player in the market now? Yes, it's the third, Microsoft will become the third largest game gaming kind of platform by revenue. So you're absolutely right. It's a huge deal. Like let's not underestimate. This is 69 billion. This is a massive deal. However, Microsoft have paid actually a well, they've agreed to pay a three billion break free. So of the deal. So if it falls through, they have to pay Activision Blizzard three billion. So they that's basically su- suggesting that they're very confident in this passing but i guess if you're a listener you'll be thinking what big te- big cap tech doing m a like that's a no-go right anti antitrust you know they're actually talking about breaking these kind of big uh, kind of giants so m a was kind of off the table um mm-hmm. but you know microsoft seemed very confident in this kind of deal getting done so i and from the root kind of whispers that i've heard i've actually um it, that everyone's very confident in this deal passing um so yeah looks looks like this is going to be a great acquisition uh, and probably from the premier ceo in in nadella um so and that looks like uh, it's going to be another really really good move and it's you know yes it's 69 billion it's only three percent of microsoft enterprise value 
So it's tiny. They've got tons of cash. <laughs> they're looking. They're looking for something to do with it, and this represents a really nice consumer-facing acquisition. I would say. Okay. Good conclusion there. We'll leave it there. Thanks very much, Eddie. And uh, Thanks, see you Sam. next time. See ya.